All right, what's up YouTube? Dylan here with Dylan's Home Espresso Bar. And today I am going to be comparing espresso from the $6,000 Linea Mini and the $300 Signature Flare Pro 2. So today we are going to be doing the comparison on the espresso only. So do you really need to spend $6,000 to get cafe style espresso from home? And that's what I would like to answer today. Now, is this going to be the perfect shot possible? Probably not because it is a little bit tricky to get a really, really good shot with the Signature Flare Pro 2. However, I'm going to try my best to replicate both shots and get two great shots on both the Linea Mini and also on the Flare Pro 2. So I've already grounded up some of my favorite coffee beans. These are the, um, these are the coffee beans that Good Brothers just sent me and it is absolutely amazing. It's raspberry, so hopefully I can extract that raspberry really well with this machine, but I've, saved, I've grinded up already to save some time, but we are gonna go ahead and compare the two. So after I get done pulling my shot and tasting it in here, we're gonna go over to the other room, and we are gonna go ahead and pull a shot of espresso with the same beans. We're gonna have to go a little bit finer when we do it with the Linea Mini, so hopefully because there's so many variabilities between both the manual and the semi-automatic machine. Hopefully we can dial it in pretty good on the first try, but we're using 17 grams. I think it's like 16 or 17 uh, on the niche. So if you guys have a niche, I know people like starting points, even though it's different for pretty much every coffee. Uh, right now, I actually have my uh, canister here preheating uh, because the biggest thing with the flare or any kind of flare or manual machines is managing your heat. So heat is a big thing when talking about manual machines because you may have the perfect grind size, you may have the perfect pressure, but if the heat's not regulated enough, then you're not gonna fully extract uh, what you could have if you were actually trying to pull a great shot. So what we're gonna do is we have the kettle set at 206 degrees. This is actually uh, given to me by Bruista. So uh, shout out to Barista for the kettle as well. I've been really enjoying it and I can't wait to uh, go ahead and use it. So I think that an electric kettle is definitely going to be a must when having a manual machine because you can control the temperature uh, pretty well as opposed to a stovetop kettle where uh, you kind of just have to go based off of uh, boil. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get everything set up. I'm going to go ahead and move this so you guys can see it. A little bit better so I just want to say welcome to all of you who are tuning in but I'm gonna to try to give you guys the best view possible here all right so first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna start by uh, using our funnel that we have with this machine so it's kind of cool just kind of goes right on top of it here so we're gonna go ahead and just put our beans inside so again, we are using 17 grams. All right. So one thing I like to do is just kind of shake it up a little bit in there and then give it a nice firm tap on the counter. So uh, I just treat this like any other shot of espresso. I just pretty much just take my finger and smooth it out as much as possible just because I don't have a distributor for my flare I'm working on getting one. I believe this is a 48 millimeter. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I do believe this is a 48 millimeter portafilter. So here we go. So when I tamp, you don't have to tamp too, too hard. The biggest key is just being consistent and also just giving a nice even pressure on all four sides. So I like to just push down on both sides and then give it a little bit of a twist here just to kind of polish it off and lift straight up. So here is our basket. So now once you have your basket pretty much prepared, leveled out, you're gonna have to put your screen on. So uh, let me go ahead and turn this here. So I have seen a lot of people and a lot of, uh, a lot of YouTubers, they will put it on like this. However, the correct way that I have read is to put this side facing up. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop that in there. I like to just kind of press on four sides, not too, too hard, just to make sure it's in there nice and even. And then now what we are going to do is since we have our, pretty much our chamber here preheating, 
we're just gonna dump all that water into a cup. This is not the cup that I'm gonna use to brew into, but I just have it just sitting by here, so it's pretty easy. All right, so this is extremely hot to the point where you can't even touch this, which is what you want, especially, like I said earlier, trying to manage that heat. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this on top, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys over to the flare. All right, so hopefully I can get you guys a decent view. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, especially when trying to get a good angle, especially with the flare. But something that I like to do is I am actually going to just fill this to the top. So you're just gonna fill the water to the top there. I'm using my left hand, I'm not left-handed. All right, so as soon as that water gets to the very top, you are good. So about there. Again, this is extremely hot. I have it set at 206 degrees. Um, so you wanna make sure it's pretty, pretty hot. And then I'm just going to let that sit there for a second because right now the water is on top of the espresso right now, so on top of the puck. And I just kind of like doing that. Uh, I'm gonna let that sit for about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna go grab a shot glass so that you guys are able to see it a little bit better with the extraction. So if you wanna prepare your puck, you can use the WDT tool to prepare your puck. However, I chosen not to. So just gonna go ahead and set this underneath and then Let's see if I can give you guys a good angle at this. So let me go ahead and turn you guys around. All right. There we go. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and pull our shot. So I like to just give it a nice pressure to start. If my scale will just stay even, there we go. So I like to give it a little bit of pressure to start that pre-infusion. And then I'll start to ramp it. So a little bit of channeling there. Shot looks pretty good. Really good color to it as well. Perfect. And there we go. That is our desired stop there. So there is our shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys up. So definitely recommend if you guys have a flare to always make sure you have a cup that stand by. But if you guys look at this shot, I mean, this shot is extremely good. So there's tiger striping in there. You don't need, I mean, I haven't tasted it yet, but you don't need a $6,000 machine in order to get a really good looking shot. So as you guys see, there's really rich crema there. Uh, bring it up there. Really nice looking shot overall. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, but there's really nothing to it. It's just very, very um, micromanaging the heat is pretty much all you have to do in order to get a really good shot with the flare. So I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up. You guys are just going to see me for a second. So if you guys are watching this uh, pre-recorded, you guys can go ahead and skip to the main part where I just talk about the shot here. So again, you guys saw the shot. The shot looked good from my angle. However, I did not get the good angle that you guys got. So let me know in the comments below if you thought the shot looked good. But overall, really nice. Uh, a lot of crema on top, which is really good. Got some tiger striping going on. And I can just smell the raspberry from the shot. So 
Uh, I'm pretty excited to try this. Still a little hot, so I'm just gonna kind of mix it around a little bit. All right, cheers. Oh, that's smooth. Okay, so um, I have pulled really, really bad shots with the Flare Pro 2. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it is very, very touchy. So I like, I found the best result is when you just let the water sit on the chamber for about 30 to 45 seconds. And what that's going to do, is gonna allow that water to kind of saturate that puck a little bit longer. Uh, I know some people like to just put the water in there and then just go right away, just give it a little bit of pre-infusion, like three, four bars of pressure and then ramp it up. But I found that my best results uh, for tasting profiles and just getting a nice looking shot like that is to let that water sit in that chamber for about 30 to 45 seconds. As hot as it can possibly go, I have it set for 206 degrees, which is pretty hot. And then I will then go probably three to four bars of pressure for the first five to six seconds for pre-infusion. And then I'll ramp it up to nine to 10 bars. And again, you get a really good tasting shot. So I'm just gonna give this one more taste test for you guys. Stay caffeinated because I have to go to work um, in about two hours. So that was excellent. So now we're gonna move over to the Linea Mini and we're gonna just kind of compare the two shots. So this was a good shot, thankfully. However, we are, we are gonna have to go a little bit finer because we are putting more grams into the basket. And I found that this has to be a little bit finer or a little bit more coarse than the Linea Mini to get a good shot. So we're gonna have to go a little bit finer when we go over to the Linea Mini. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in here. I'll clean this up later, but I'll bring you guys into the next setup. So uh, if you guys are enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really, really helps support me and my channel. All right. <clears throat> All right, so just really quick, I know this isn't part of the video, but th these are my dogs just waiting in my coffee room ready for dad to brew some more coffee. All right, so this is gonna, I'm not gonna move you guys. All right, so we're just gonna have to work around them, I guess, but that's okay. They're part of the family and that's what happens. I'll just put this over you guys. All right, so here we go. Now that we just got done pulling that shot with the flare, we're gonna come back over here and we are going to Maybe move this from 16 to 14. It shouldn't be too, too much of a change from the Linea Mini to the Flare, but it is, like I said, a tad bit finer that you have to do. So I'm gonna go grab my dosing cup really quick. This is the problem of having too many setups. You leave things in other places and you have no idea where you put them, but that's okay. Bear with me here. All right, so if you guys are new uh, new to the channel or new to the live, uh, we just got done pulling our shot with the Flare Pro 2. It was extremely good. I actually got really good tiger striping and that shot was delicious. Raspberry was very, very prominent in that shot. Now, I'm not a huge, huge fan of espresso, but let me tell you, this Good Brothers coffee with the raspberry tasting note has definitely blown me away. It kind of tastes like the coffee that one of my subscribers, Dane, sent to me from Australia. It was Ona Coffee Raspberry Candy. And this coffee, let me tell you, is absolutely amazing. And unfortunately, I think he only has a limited quantity. I am not sponsored by them. I just want to recommend good coffee to you guys. And this has blown me away. I can't wait to um, hopefully get another bag of this soon because this is amazing. But like I said, he only has limited quantity. So do yourselves a favor and go get some of this coffee. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and grind 20 grams. Set this aside here. All right, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, did you guys think that shot looked pretty good earlier? Uh, I thought it was a pretty good looking shot. It definitely tasted really good, so I guess it doesn't really matter how the shot looked as long as it tasted good. And let me tell you, I would definitely let you know if it was bad because I've had some pretty bad shots off camera 
with the Flare Pro 2. So I got pretty lucky to taste that one. All right, so 20, point, or 20 grams right there. So good. Now we're just going to see if I can get you guys a good view of the puck preparation. So whenever you guys are making espresso, puck preparation is huge. This is going to matter on consistency. So as long as you guys are pretty consistent, you guys know when to grind finer and when to grind coarser, uh, you should be pretty well equipped with the knowledge to pull a pretty good shot every day. All right, so I just like to give it a couple taps. I'm going to use the WDT or the distribution tool from St. Anthony. And then I'm also going to be using the Pullman Tamper today. So this has been one of my absolute favorite investments so far. It is absolutely amazing. It is a precision tamper, so it definitely gets the edges of the basket, which is very, very important when trying to get a nice, even extraction. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move you guys over here so you guys can see the shot better. So give me one second while I move you guys down again. I really need to buy a better tripod for you guys. So. All right, so hopefully we get a pretty nice extraction here but then again it's live and i can't just edit this out so good for you guys not so good for me but that's okay trying not to keep you guys long i just want to show you guys the comparison is it really worth spending six thousand dollars on an espresso machine when all you drink is espresso i mean there's so many things out there nowadays like the nano foamer which um I have, and I am going to be reviewing for you guys here soon, so can't wait for that. All right, gotta go grab my scale. See, like I said, I just forget everything in other rooms, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and grab this really quick. All right, so you don't want your puck to sit in there as long as I've been letting it sit in there, but it's okay for right now. Forgive me. All right. All right, so shot looks pretty good. No channeling from what I can see. Streams come together pretty nicely there. Really nice looking shot. All right, we got 42 grams in 26 seconds. So really, really nice, rich crema there. Uh, let me just show you guys this shot. So like I said, I got lucky with both shots, thankfully. But just take a look at that. Really nice, rich and crema as well. I mean, if you guys can see that. But this is what happens when you consistently use fresh coffee. You just get a nice, rich crema and hopefully a really good shot so obviously like i said i've gotten lucky with some of the shots that i pulled today which i am okay with that because i've had my fair share of lives where they just did not go as planned so i'm going to go ahead and get this situated one more time again sorry for the confusion with moving these things back and forth all right let me go grab a spoon so I can mix this up and give you guys a taste test with the espresso. All right. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna mix this up here. The creme is the part that's gonna be the most bitter, but to be honest, I'm kind of getting used to it. And espresso is pretty much an acquired taste, but with these coffee beans and tasting the raspberry as strong as I do, definitely a no brainer to keep the uh, crema in there. Okay, so uh, cheers. Okay, so obviously with an espresso machine like the Linea Mini, you're gonna get a more consistent heat. So the Linea Mini I have set for 205 degrees and you're gonna pretty much get a consistent 205 degree temperature. So 
that is the one positive side with a machine like this. However, we're talking $6,000 for a machine like this, just bare $6,000 as opposed to the Signature Flare Pro 2, which is coming in around, I think it's like $309 I paid after taxes. So it's a huge difference. So if it just takes a little bit more of managing heat to get the espresso shot that you want at home, can you, can you, can you acquire a uh, cafe style espresso shot with a $300 machine? 100% yes. So if you guys are looking to pretty much stay on a budget and you can't afford a $6,000 machine, which normally I would not go out and say, yes, buy a $6,000 machine. The only reason I did was number one for the channel and number two, I am going to be creating or owning a coffee cart here soon. So I think that it was a good investment for me and uh, pretty much my situation. But you can pull a really good shot with the manual machine at $300. So if I were to compare the two, yeah, obviously I would want a Linea Mini over a Flare. That's not, that's not in the question at all. So the big question is, can you get a can you get the same tasting profile espresso shot with the $300 machine as a $6,000 machine? And the answer is yes. It may be a little bit harder to acquire to get that perfect shot because like I said, I have pulled really good shots and really, really bad shots with the Flare Pro 2. I haven't pulled really, really bad shots with the Linea Mini, but I have pulled bad shots, just not as often. So to answer the question that I've gotten a lot, is it worth spending $6,000 on an espresso machine? If you're a coffee enthusiast, you have the extra money to spend, yes, get the Linea Mini, it's amazing. Uh, milk frothing is 100% just out of this world. It's a steam horse, it's just absolutely amazing. But like I said, you can buy things off Amazon. Uh, I have this milk frother here. Uh, it's called Power Licks, which uh, I'll link this in the description below. Uh, so you can just heat up your milk, froth it. But the problem with this is it gets it too foamy. So with the Nano Foamer, it is, uh, which is a new, I think it's like 40 or $50, uh, you can really acquire that texture that a machine like this can acquire as long as you just have some kind of heating source to heat up that milk. So again, if you're looking at just solely espresso, nothing else, Yes, you can acquire the same shot as a $6,000 machine as you can with a $300 machine. So I really hope this video helped you guys. Uh, I thank you guys so much for tuning into my live. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps. Uh, any money that I get from YouTube uh, through the uh, chat, I think there's like super stickers that you can donate to the channel. Uh, it's all going to go straight back to the channel. It's all going to be... Uh, pretty much here for you guys. I'll do more equipment review for you guys as well if you guys have any in mind. Um, I would like to purchase um, more stuff for my coffee cart coming up here soon as well so I can do a separate same channel just different list uh, and I'm going to be vlogging uh, all of my coffee cart stuff so that will be pretty fun for me and hopefully fun for you guys to watch and I hope you guys enjoyed the video enjoyed my channel Definitely let me know in the comments below what's your favorite espresso machine, manual, auto, automatic, or semi-automatic, um, and let me know down in the comments below. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys later on. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at some of the questions here really quick. I have an espresso machine if you don't like espresso. So that is very true. So some people like to have an espresso machine just so they can have a milk-based beverage, but have you tried Rick's Coffee Roaster, the Mocha Java is out of this world? I have not, but that does sound pretty delicious. Let's see. Sorry, my wife is not here. I asked the seller, they were one, I'm wondering if it could be, okay. All right, guys, so thank you guys so much for everything. You guys have been absolutely amazing. For those of you who have followed my channel and for those of you who continue to support me, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Yes, the answer, you can get just as good of an espresso shot with your flair as you can the Linea Mini. So we can put that to rest, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, night, wherever you are in the world. 
Thank you guys so much. Just know you guys are loved and appreciated. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.